Welcome to the 17th lecture of logic and distributed control system. Today we are going to discuss about the PLC digital bit functions and applications. And uh, the objectives are at the end of this chapter you will able to describe the PLC digital bit control system, describe the bit peak contact function and its use, use digital bits to turn outputs on and off, modify the control digital bits in a register, use shift registers to move digital bits within and through registers, apply digital bit register system to process control programs. As an introduction, most PLCs are capable of working with digital bits instead of controlling output devices from individual contacts. These PLCs use register bits in groups. For example, if one of status of 16 machine must be controlled, just one of the 16 bits in a 16 bit register could control each of the 16 machines. If there are 157 machines to turn on and off, only 10 of these 16 bit registers are needed for the on off control uh, because 9 full registers and one tenth one we have to use. Okay, and by con Trust a con contact coil ladder control would need 157 ladder, ladder lines in the programming. Means M only if you want to control 157 number of machines by contacts and coil. So you need require 157 number of uh, uh, lines or rounds to write the program. But here, if you use the register contains to make the on off uh, control for 150 number of machines so it may be a one line programming so plc not only uses fixed pattern of register bits can, but can easily manipulate and change the individual bits so how it can be done a plc can pick set latch and manipulate the individual bits in the chosen register so you have 16 bit register and each of the bit you can set you can latch and you can manipulate it also can shift register contents to right or left means to reload the data you can uh, for, uh, you can shift the content of the registers in the direction of right or left register shifts can be set to move the bits one position per input pulse that we are going to see so the shifting operation will, will be bit by bit uh, 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 means uh, one position per input pulse shifts may also be set for multiple position movement two three or four or more means if we want to shift the multiple or to change the multiple position that also can be done instead of uh, doing one by one okay the functions discussed in the last chapters also play a part in process control with digital bits that is move function for example move enables you to replace the entire contents in order to change the 16 output commands if we want an on off pattern changed shift is an appropriate new register pattern that we are going to understand in case of move you are replacing entire 16 bit content but here in using this uh, uh, means a bit peak set and latch you have a control bit by bit okay for a register so bit patterns in a register in some plc's the internal slots for memory are called addresses in other the slots are called registers this chapter uses the word register previous chapters dealt with using numerical values in registers for plc function operation this chapter is not concerned with the registers numerical value but only its binary pattern status that is mm, of ones and zero so here we are not concerned about what is the decimal value or the binary value uh, of uh, value uh, stored in the particular register instead of that we are interested in binary pattern for example start with the register b setting in figure suppose uh, we have a holding register 207 and this is the bit pattern okay so this is a 16 bit pattern we have 0111 100 0101 001 okay 
so uh, so uh, the bit pattern has inserted in the register by calling it up on the screen and then keyboard inserting its desired bit value so we have to call this hr207 and bit by bit by uh, um, uh, keyboard we have to insert the values uh, inside each uh, position fine for illustration purpose, the register bits in HR207 have been arbitrarily given the values shown. HR207 now has the equivalent BCD value 7851 and an equivalent decibel value of 30801. But we are not concerned about the values, but we are more interested in the beat pattern because using this beat pattern, we are going to control maybe 16 number of uh, lights or 16 number of machines or 16 number of motors. These BCD and decimal values are irrelevant at this point. Only the binary pattern shown is useful. Binary bit patterns can be applied to and from and any type of register, not just of the holding register. Okay. Suppose we wish to have the output CR81 and CR82 controlled by register bit status. So we have suppose two outputs CR18 and CR81 and CR82. Maybe they are representing some motor or machines. And we want to control the status of this CR81 and CR82 by the bit um, a bit status in a control uh, bit status in a register to have CR81 controlled by bit 11 in HR207 and CR82 controlled by bit 12. You would designate these contacts as shown in figure. Let's, let us see what we can do. So here you see here two outputs are there. CR81 and CR82 and we want to control this CR81 and CR82 by the bit status of bit 11 this is the 11 and the bit 12 of HR207 so that's why here as a context we have written HR207 bit 11 and HR207 bit 12 it means that that um, we are using the contacts the status of the contact depending on the bit status of the register HR07. Okay, if that suppose bit 11 is 0, it means that CR81 will be off, and if bit 12 is 1, it means that CR82 will be on. So, depending on the bit status of HR207, we are going to control the CR81 and CR82. Okay, so uh, so here, uh, if, uh, so now the question is that how you will enter the values of or uh, or how you want to change the status of the um, of the bit 11 and 12 or so on. Okay, how you can do that one? A menu appears when you press the contact key on the keyboard instead of choosing CR or IN okay here you see we are not using any IN okay in, in, in input uh, contact as you have doing in this case you would choose bit, bit peak that is BP take the first 10 bits from the right uh, is standard so the counting will start from the right so suppose we if you want to control 10 machines okay then we can have the 10 big uh, bit peak from the HR207 and which is going to control uh, 10 corresponding uh, output okay the outputs with a feeder bit of 1 would be on and those with 0 bit would be off if you modify HR207 to another pattern of bits the outputs would change status accordingly an appropriate BP contact system should be used so now we are going to uh, understand that uh, um, um, the bit bit peak functions along with um, along with some additional things they are the suppose you wish to change the bit 4 in HR207 from 0 to 1 so bit 4 if you notice that it is uh, already 0 and we want to make it 1 then what we how we can do that one call up register HR207 on the screen and completely rewrite its bit pattern it may be one option or pushing return uh, would insert the 
pattern into the PLC CPU otherwise move the cursor over the bit 4 and change bit 4 only this change process is very slow okay you, you cannot perform the um, change the status of the particular bit by this way so that's why bit status changes are more quickly accomplished by using one of the three PLC function bit set BS bit clear BC and bit follow that is BF so BS BC and bit follow so from the name it is clear that bit set and bit clear what would be their function and we also we are going to understand bit follow function of bit follow so suppose first is bit set function we illustrate the first function bit set using the fourth bit of the holding register HR207 when the bit um, set function is enabled suppose this is the contact uh, im63 uh, when it is enabled then here you see it is written bs004 and the address of the corresponding register hr207 it means that we want to change the or we want to set the bit or um, fourth bit of hr207 okay so when bs function is enabled in figure the bit 4 of hr207 is set to 1 if it was not already a 1 turning the function off would have no further effect on the bit it would remain 1 okay so once you will close then what will happen that bit 4 bit 4 is going to change from 0 to 1 and remember that the counting will start from the right side that this is the initial uh, uh, means the, the, uh, this is the initial starting point fine not from this side fourth bit fourth bit is not not from left side this is from the right side okay and bit clear is also clear also understood that how how the function will be the bit clear function shown in figure has the opposite effect of bit set the example in figure operates on bit 5 of hr207 when enabled when enabled the bc function would change to bit 5 1 to 0 okay so this this is 0 1 2 uh, uh, sorry 1 2 3 4 5 so this is the fifth bit okay so b fifth bit uh, will be reset to 0 when this function is enabled if you had applied bc to bit 6 and remember that here it is written bc 005 now if you write bc bit set um, uh, sorry uh, bit clear okay bit clear uh, 0006 then what will happen it is you see already 0 so it will be remain 0 when enabled bit function would uh, that if you apply bc to bit 6 nothing would happen because bit 6 is already a 0 when bc is turned off nothing further happens okay so this is the way bit clear function is working now very interesting is the bit follow function there is one more bit operating functions the bf or bit uh, um, bit or bit sorry bf or bit follow function what are, what is that now go back to bit 4 of hr207 figure shows that bf function as applied to this bit okay so bf004 hr207 so we are going to apply this bf uh, to the fourth bit of hr207 then what will happen now when enabled when if when it is enabled the function set the bit to 1 when it is disabled or off the function sets the bit to 0 notice how bf differs from bs and bc on and off are both active and significant in the bit follow function okay so this is the way bit follow is going to work so now we are going to understand the the function of bs bc and bit follow function using an application okay figure shows an application with using bit status changes for bs bc and bf the application involves a white a, um, uh, involves a board painting process that uses the bit modification function white square boards are to be painted in red in certain areas there are 16 square sections on the board as shown 
So suppose you have a square board like this which is white and 16 small squares are there and you can see that 1, 5, 7, 12, 13, 14 and 15 this square has to be painted with red okay and you can say you can you can you can think that over the board if you, if you think that if over the board if this is the board okay if this is the board okay if this is the board on the each of the uh, uh, each uh, on the each of the square some spray machines are there so it is going to spray on that particular square to make it red fine so that's why here it has been uh, told that <coughs> There are 16 square sections on the board as shown. There are 16 spray guns on above each of the 16 sections that spray perfect square through a template. When the spray guns that is red operate in the pattern of the original HR207, the red and white pattern will be shown. A bit of one would cause the corresponding spray to take place and each spray gun's operate, uh, operation is controlled by a PLC contact as shown in the function. So now first of all we will decide what will be the content of HR207. So I want to make the uh, the spray gun on for the uh, square one okay so that that's why this beat is one and rest of the two three four will be zero so zero 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 then fifth beat is one sixth beat is zero seventh beat is one eighth beat is zero like that nine ten eleven will be zero twelve beat is one and then 13 14 15 they will be all one and 16 will be zero and now if the content of the hr has been fixed which is going to control the spray gun then what will happen we will control the spray gun by the beat pattern of hr207 so that's why hr207 we will call hr207 every time and the status of the cr1 which is the spray gun um, will be controlled by the beat pattern or a beat peak of 1, 2, 3, uh, uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, like that. Okay. So, this is the way you can perform the operation what we desire. Okay. So, that's why each spray gun's operation is controlled by a PLC contact as shown. The input contact is described by two specified lines, a register's number line and a bit number line. So, this is the register uh, what you are uh, calling and this is the corresponding bit you are calling to control the status of CR001. Note that you could use an output group register instead of 16 output coils. The illustration uses individual individual output coil so to for better understanding here individually it has been shown but instead of that you can have the output uh, um, um, that is out uh, uh, group register okay instead of individual uh, coils cr1 cr2 and 2 3 like that fine a board model now second second uh, requirement uh, i am going to discuss that is a board model patterns are changed throughout the day here we have taken a fixed pattern that this 1 5 7 12 13 14 15 will be uh, the red painting and rest of the things will be white Re rest of the squares will be white but now uh, the things has been changed requirement has been changed that a board model patterns are changed throughout the day the red or white patterns will change for example the square 15 is to be changed from red to white this change may be made permanently by applying the bit clear functions to change the square 3 from white to red apply bs function to b3 and to change the square 10 back and forth repetitively between red and white apply bf function as shown in figure so now the requirement is that uh, the b the 3 was previously white changes it changes the white to red and previously 15 was um, uh, red and it, it has to be changed from red to white and another thing is that 10 has to be 10th number of bit has uh, has the alternate color so now what we will do the with the existing programming the modification is that that uh, we will use um, uh, that is uh, bc 15 bc3 you see bc3 
uh, uh, sorry BS3 we will use because we have to bit set and for the square 15 we will use BC15 and uh, and uh, for the square 10 where the alternative colors are required we will use BF that is bit follow uh, 10 for the content for the for the register HR207 okay so this is the way we can use the bit uh, clear bit set and bit follow functions okay so now uh, uh, another thing is that uh, that how to load the data that actually we have to dis uh, discuss that how to load the data effectively so then we will use a seat register function it may be you have understood in the digital electronics a similar way we are going to do the shift register functions enable the operator to move digital bits within and through the plc registers this is accomplished through shift right shift left rotate and multiple shift and multiple shift can be uh, also uh, possible in case, case of uh, plc in this section we will discuss each of those functions so first is shift right function figure shows the operation of shift right that is sr function this explanation uses only one register later section show how to use more than one okay there are normally three inputs to the functional block so for the shift register function you will find that three inputs will be there that is in 51 52 and 53 you should see 53 is de designated as enable 52 is data in and 51 is shift and this is the operation this coil is representing sr 111 representing the shift right operation at most interestingly here you see the start register is hr 207 and number of register is 001 it means that we want to shift the content of the register uh, that is uh, that is only one and that is hr 207 okay and now suppose uh, that uh, said so now suppose this other bit patterns has to be inserted in HR207 by the shifting operation okay so initially you can assume that uh, all the bits are bits are 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. means all 16 bits are uh, 0 now with the we uh, with the shift function shift right function we have to reload this pattern to the hr207 how we, we can do that one and we will understand using um, we will understand the uses of this uh, inputs okay the bottom input is normally the enable input as in previous PLC functions. The middle input determines whether a 1 or a 0 is inserted into the register when shifting. And when the top input is activated, the register shifts all bits one position to the right and add a new bit is added on the left. Whether the bit in the vacated registers on the left becomes 1 or 0, depending on whether the middle input was on or off when the shift took place. If the middle data line is on, a 1 is inserted and for off, a 0. So that's why here you to make the system enable, you have to make it close. Okay. And for the shifting operation, the IN51 should get the pulse and pulse may be at regular interval, it should shift. And whenever it is receiving a pulse, at that moment, if the IN52 is closed, then 1 will be inserted and if it is open, then 0 will be inserted. That is the way the shift right is going to work. And how it is going to reload or uh, reload the data? Now, the pattern in the figure illustrates how to use a shift register to produce a original values of HR207, which is indicated here. Okay. And uh, a shift is made 16 times because 16 data you have to enter those 16 number of pulses are required to reload the data as per our desired pattern. So this illustration start with all zeros in the register but it could be any data. The register might have had only other pattern. It would not affect the final pattern since all previous bit 1s and zeros are pushed out after 16 step. Another important part of this SR function is that the coil or the output Output. what will be the status of the sr111 now or status may follow the status of the beat on the right a1 produces an output on and zero results the output off so now 
here you can see that how within the 16 steps the final uh, data uh, what we desire to load in uh, the register that has been loaded that is very easy to follow you can do that one okay so now suppose uh, that we need to control 45 machines or functions 16 bits are not enough to control these processes we need to shift through three registers because um, 3 into 16 is 48 to cover the 45 outputs by replacing the number 3 in the functional block that asked for the register. So previously you see here we have taken register number of register 1 instead of that if we write uh, register number 3 it means that the starting register if you specify HR207 then what is going to happen that 207 16 bit will be loaded HR208 another 16 bit will be loaded and for the HR209 13 bits will be loaded it because we want to control the uh, uh, control the um, output 40 num 45 number of uh, machines outputs are there so that's why this is the way the 16 uh, means uh, the uh, multiple registers the data can be shifted okay so then shift left function shift left that is sl functions operate exactly like shift right except that bit status is inserted on the right the bit shift to the left and leave the uh, leave on to the left the output coil status normally then follows the status of the last bit on the left so now we are going to understand the register rotate function okay so suppose we used to save and bit sequence status that leaves and lost when using seat register okay but we want to reload it again so you also may want to repeat a pattern again and again certain situations may be created this may be accomplished by using register rotate function which is found in some but not all plc's its operation is shown in the figure so let us see the operation the now the pattern movement is repeated again and again as a result of the automatic re-entry system rotate functions are rotate right that is rr or rotate left that is rl rotate systems can be of two other general types that is full register re-entry or partial register re-entry the full register system re-entry point can only be at the beginning of the register with the 16 bit registers you might or you must shift through 32 48 64 and other multiple of 16 bits so now let us understand mm, so this is the uh, run and this is the reset enable and this is the rotate right okay so you have to specify the starting register hr 161 and depending on the pc or model here you can specify the number of register yeah, uh, that is maybe two or sometimes there is a provision that you have have to specify number of bits that is 21 anyway we require um, uh, two 16 bits if it is 21 then also we require two 16 bit registers okay so now what will happen this is the way okay so uh, the data will be loaded uh, cyclically uh, within the uh, within the registers by the function rotate write function okay and um, uh, then um, uh, here uh, here you can see that that with the partial re-entry type you may choose the exact number of bits needed for example if you need only 27 bits you could re-enter the initial registers at 27 minus 16 point which is the 11th bit the, the point would be specified by entering 27 bits only uh, into the the block function some advanced plc have the shift right and shift left function that shifts more than one bit at a time this might be level as multiple shift right that is msr and multiple shift left that is msl or n bit right or n bit left 
figure shows a typical multiple shift register the msr or msl functions need one more piece of input information that the sr and sl function compared to the sr and sl function simple shift right and shift left function specification of the number of shifts to be made at time n okay so here you can see that one that uh, you have the msr function you have the starting register you have the shift 3 um, means you have the number of register 1 and also you have to take tell that how many number of shifts you want to do okay so now here you can see that how the uh, multiple shift register uh, or multiple shift write is going to be operated so initially suppose it is 10101111001010110 okay after the shift in 0 uh, 0 to 0 8 then what is going to happen that uh, three number of uh, position will be shifted simultaneously you see 101 has been shifted here and this bit is going to rest of the bit is going to be out means this three bit is going to be out and uh, you will find that based on the status of um, in208 the entry will be done suppose if the in208 during the shifting was open then 0 will be loaded and if it was closed then 1 will be loaded so in this way the multiple shift write is also possible msr okay so you can guess what will be the uh, operation uh, with the uh, multiple shift left figure gives the summary of the operation of eight types of shift registers uh, that that is discussed so now in this this you can uh, study by yourself that word shift left shift right shift left full shift right full then shift left parallel shift right uh, sorry partial and shift rotate partial then multiple shift left multiple shift right so these are the operation you can understand now we will end the discussion with the shift register application the shift register application example in involves controlling a light pattern suppose as you you have seen in the metro some arrows are there so suppose we want to uh, uh, do or develop a plc programming to produce that sequential arrow figure shows an arrangement of lights to give a flashing or moving arrow pattern that moves to the right so suppose to indicate that you have to go the right direction this is the light pattern has to glow sequentially okay now you see what is our requirement so here total 22 number of lights has to go in a particular sequence sequence is that first 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 will glow then 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 sequentially it is going to glow so let us understand the requirement each light is connected to a plc output terminal each terminal is controlled by a bit location in the two registers shown so each of the uh, uh, status of the light will be controlled because 22 so 16 plus 16 uh, two registers we have taken and the content of the two registers are going to uh, control the status of the lights okay as the bead patterns are moved to the right one step at a time the light patterns move to the right and the seven ones in the registers are progressively moves to the right in this system a complete arrow that is for example one through several does not move all at once to 8 through 14 the lighted lamps progress to the next arrow one at a time starting at the top that is 1 2 3 like that and then 8 9 10 11 like that the arrows are means uh, the lights are going to glow the figure illustrates the complete plc function that accomplishes the movement the speed of the movement is controlled by the time set by tt 151 it can be any uh, choice maybe fifth by 10 of the of a second um, in this example we have taken so let us see the operation so this is the light 1 light 2 light 3 up to light 28 okay and they are depending on the bit peak 16 15 14 okay 
like that now um, uh, they are they will depend on the hr112 because we are going to control the cr uh, light one by the first register that is hr uh, hr112 and then hr111 will be controlled uh, by the 17 18 uh, up to 28 okay 17 to 28 so that's why you will find that uh, that is uh, HR111 that is uh, that's why bit peak is 5 and bit peak is 6 which is corresponding to light 27 okay now uh, how we can uh, shift the uh, pattern that is 1111 that is you see here first 111111 total 71 has to be inserted to the register HR uh, 112 such that lights from A1 to 7 is going to uh, going to um, glow sequentially means with a specified time duration okay how it can be done now it can be done that we have taken a shift registers and number of register 2 and the starting registers is HR111 and we have taken SR150 that is the uh, operation that is the shift right operation we have taken we have taken the enable data line and step okay and data line by which we will we will enter the data so now whenever in 50 is closed then this uh, timer also we have taken such that we can pulse the tt151 at a regular interval of time suppose here it is time uh, time constant that is fifth that is pulse timer stepping time that is 1 by 10 second here for example suppose it is 1 by 10 second okay and you know that how to create the pulse this programming is already known the tt151 has been used as a normally closed contact as a uh, enable uh, reset okay so whenever this is um, closed then what will happen that every one tenth second this 151 is going to uh, close close and uh, reclose re uh, every uh, one tenth second interval of time and what will happen depending on the data line if you close at that time then every uh, one tenth second the data is going to enter in HR uh, that is HR uh, that is HR uh, 112 and HR 111 sequentially so that's why here it has been told that enabling the timer and the sr is accomplished by in 50 as the ones move through the registers the corresponding outputs are progressively turned on by the 28 bit peak function shown at the bottom the arrow moves to the right to repeat the process you could reload zeros and was manually by opening or closing the data input line or you could use move system to reload the the two operating registers from two master registers and if you had used a rotate right function the reloading would have done uh, we, uh, with the 32 automatic uh, steps okay so in this way you can perform this operations that the sequentially the lights are going to blow and the arrow will move from the right direction so this is the way you can use the uh, very important uh, operation that is digital bit functions and uh, uh, and its application you have seen so i will stop here thank you